Most of us get to Pebble Beach by flying into San Francisco and then driving with great anticipation the couple of hours down the coast, past Fisherman's Wharf and Monterey, to the Del Monte Forest, where you arrive upon 17-mile drive. Just the sound of that road alone gives golfers goosebumps. As long as Golf Digest has been ranking public golf courses, Pebble Beach is number one. You've arrived at the greatest meeting of land and sea, they call it. Just insert the word dramatic in front of any hole here and you won't be wrong. Let's get going because you're on the tee. This is 18 holes at Pebble Beach Golf Links. The first hole, not great, but good. It puts you right on the course, starting out with the hustle bustle of the big putting green near the lodge and all the activity along the promenade. The first bends gently 380 yards to the right. Don't be surprised if you birdie it. However, if you're on the putting surface above the hole, look out, you could be walking away with a five. The second is a par five for us mere mortals, but plays as a four par in the United States Open, making the course a par 71. Guys like us lay up the approach shot between the trees flanking the fairway, short of the barranca, leaving about 100 yards to the hole. The putting surface is a small one, like all of the greens at Pebble Beach. The third measures 404 yards, but you can hit it over the trees and cut the dog leg. Short is better than long on your second, or you'll end up over the road. The first sudden death playoff in major championship history ended right here on this surface. 1977, the PGA Championship, Lanny Watkins ended it with a putt to beat Gene Littler. Four runs along Stillwater Cove a tiny par four that yields to a pinpoint wedge. It's a narrow target and opening to the green, but anything on the putting surface is a birdie putt. Then comes the one they call the new fifth, even though Jack Nicklaus designed it a quarter century ago. He replaced an indifferent inland par three with this sensational one, about 200 yards. You aim it a little left and you'll bounce toward the flag. Now begins the celebrity holes. Most pros will feel some pressure with the tee shot because there's a line of bunkers down the left and a seawall on the right. Those fairway bunkers on the left are placed there to upbraid the cowardly, but don't go right either. On these middle holes, the Pacific Ocean is a constant companion, kind of like my arthritis. It's a monster that works its way along cliffs so steep you cannot see the slope below. As far as you know, the world ends on the right side of these holes. Then there's the most photographed par three in the cosmos, number seven. Is there a more fun hole anywhere in the world to play? Craggy rock outcroppings painted with sea foam and blue sky. Club selection ranges from sand wedge to five iron. Just don't get lost in the beauty of this hole. Wipe the smile off your face because it's time to play number eight. The premier two-shotter in golf, Nicholas's favorite approach. Peter Andrews once described the hole as requiring a drive in the 240 yard range, followed by a boring iron some 190 yards over a yawning chasm to a green about the size of a double bed surrounded by bunkers. The ninth dances along the cliffs for 526 yards. And then to show you that they aren't kidding on the 10th hole, you get to do it all over again on another 495 yarder. One time, Tony Lima tumbled off the precipice and fell 18 feet to the beach below, suffering bruises and contusions. Pebble Beach can do that to you. It's a link style course. 10 holes out to a house on the point once owned by Gene Hackman, and then eight holes straight back to the lodge. The 11th is a devilish par four, only 390, but keep the sand out of your shoes and watch out for the slippery green. 
the 12th requires a 200-yard iron or hybrid with the trajectory of a mortar shell. Pebble Beach's guidebook is pleased to call the 13th a breather. In Ben Hogan's last Crosby, he was paired with Bing himself as his partner. In Sunday's round, the weather was so bad, Crosby asked Ben to repair his home, which adjoined the hole. Hogan declined and resolutely completed his round in 81. So something in the 90s isn't so bad. Tighten your shoelaces for the 580-yard 14th, the hardest hole every year on the PGA Tour. The green has a bigger footprint now, adding hole locations, but it's still a bear. Arnold Palmer once hit his second shot off a tree out of bounds and then immediately did it again. That night, a storm uprooted the same tree. Such was the power of Arnie, or maybe it was the serendipity of Pebble Beach. 15 is another breather for many, but be sure not to lose your tee shot right on the 17-mile drive. If you hit it in the fairway, it's definitely a birdie hole. Oftentimes, the gallery and the grandstand next to the tee is boisterous and well lubricated. If they're not there when you're playing it, just imagine they are. It might be worth an extra 10 yards in adrenaline. And then comes that glorious stretch, 16 through 18, marching to the sea. Peter De Bruyner called it the most demanding, the most beautiful, and the most exhilarating finish in championship golf. These holes, a par four, a par three, and a par five, can always be relied upon to serve up a champion. 16, the 402-yard dogleg right over a bunker, then over a barranca to one of the trickiest greens on the course. Seventeen is the hole for history, bookending Nicholas's famous one iron that smacked against the flagstick in the 1972 U.S. Open, and Tom Watson impossibly chipping in from the heavy rough greenside in the 82 Open. But my favorite was Palmer hitting it over the green onto the rocks below. The King flailed away to a sextuple nine. Jimmy Demerit. Commentating back then got off one of his most famous lines. If he elects to take a penalty, his nearest drop would be Honolulu. And then the moment we've all been waiting for, the greatest finishing hole in golf, the 543-yard 18th. All the way around Pebble Beach Golf Links, the ocean is whispering to you, don't go right. Now, all of a sudden at 18, it shouts, don't go left. That fairway bunker that runs over 100 yards to the green, mm, it's caught many a ball during the day. On a windy afternoon and high tide, you'll be sprayed by the crashing waves. So what? Go out, make five, and make a final closing special memory. Now, repair to the lodge, which is every bit as grand and cool as it sounds. There's no better way to finish a round of golf anywhere in the world. Pebble Beach, the place, the course, the vibe. It's a national treasure. After all, it's 18 holes at Pebble Beach, a once-in-a-lifetime experience every time you play it. <laughs>